Also and you're right, off. they've got Morrill. Actually, uh, what happens Outside. there, Bill, is Phil Willard also faced off instead of Enzer. Enzer's got that injury. We'll watch that as the game goes on. Enzer's great. Maryland in the white. And they'll start their first clear. Here you see goaltender Beardmore. But Jimmy Beardmore comes out of the goal. You don't have to ask him twice. He comes out, takes charge of the clear. And the very first opportunity, he took it all the way up the field. That's something that has really been successful for Jimmy Beardmore. He does it better than anybody in the country. Right then was a good example of how Beardmore, from his defensive position, can dictate the tempo of the game. He brought it down and hand-delivered it to the attack. Bill Willard, number 17, has the ball now, as you see from behind the cage. Bill, what they've done is Maryland is starting their second unit. This is actually their second offensive midfield unit. I think that's a ploy by Dickie Dell to match up better with his first unit, which will come in after them. Behind the net is Tom Bedard, number 14. But that guy with the ball right now, Brendan Hanley, is the guy who controls the offense. Brendan Hanley is naturally left-handed. He's working the right side, which he normally doesn't do, but he controls the offense. He tried to feed in front, and Enzer couldn't pick up the ground ball. Actually, Willard, and it will roll back towards midfield. The Terps defeated the Jays on April 18th at College Park, 11-7, rather, ending a long losing streak for the Terps. They are undefeated coming in on the favorite to capture a national title. Loose ball push was the call. And that was a good example, Bill, of why this game is going to be won on ground balls. Both coaches feel that ground balls are important. That ball did not leave the surface of the playing field. It rolled with a lot of speed to do it, but because of the heavy field, it stopped. They had to play the ball before it went out. A key factor today, ground balls, because the field is slow. They brought that first midfield in, have the Terps. This is Tom Warchdell, an All-American, number 22. There's a shot in front and a goal for the chair. Brian Willard puts Maryland on top, 1-0. Worstel fed him, and Willard fires it in by Kesenik, and the Terps take a 1-0 lead. Brian Willard has 17 goals on the season. This is why Maryland is so difficult. You concentrate on stopping Worstel, Worstel gives it to Willard. Now Willard comes in, look, the defense is confused. He face dodges to get a closer angle, comes in on Quint, takes the far pipe, and how about that for your accuracy? Right inside the pipe, a tremendous shot for that one goal advantage. Brian Willard puts the Terps on top. Only a minute 39 into the first quarter. This time, Enzer takes the face off for the Terps and wins and feeds back to Beardmore who races up the field again. This is the goaltender for the Maryland Terrapins. Bill, how about that for confidence? He throws it 20 yards back to the goal to give it to Beardmore because that's how much faith they have in Beardmore controlling the clear. And he gets it across. Slippery field, Bullen slips down. Could be a fast break. Here's Damon Stewart for the Jays. And he's hit from behind by Willard, and the whistle blows the stop play. And we have the push from behind on Willard. A loose ball push, so the Jays will retain possession as Damon Stewart runs off. The long stick midi made a good play to bring the ball the length of the field. Well, here's the play again. Damon Stewart running down. He was chased from behind by Brian Willard. If you're a lacrosse player, you know that just because a guy beats you doesn't mean you can't play defense on him. Willard chased him from behind, and as soon as he dragged the stick, Willard made the check. A little bit of a push, though. The ball goes to Hopkins. You can hear goaltender Beardmore yelling. We have both of the nets mic. He'll be yelling for the defenseman in front to play the attackers. 14 is Larry Ladoy in the midfielder to Brendan Kelly. This is the number one midfield unit for Hopkins. This is the unit that's going to have to do it if they're going to have success today. Morrill tried to feed Kelly, and it will go back towards midfield where it's picked up by Ladoyan. A transfer from Virginia. He left Virginia after two years to come to Hopkins. Now Brian Wood. Tough matchup there. Brian Wood on McNeil. McNeil's got his work cut out for him. Brian Wood, again, first team All-American. He has not had a successful season this year, but any game, he can take charge of a game, and that's what's scaring the daylights out of Dickie Dell. But again, John Ciccaroni starting at that attack, and Boubier on the bench. He is a first-team All-American attackman, not on the field for Johns Hopkins. This midfield unit was responsible for 41 goals. They match up real well offensively with the Maryland first midfield unit. It's the second unit where production falls off. Maryland's the midfield unit, and the second unit has scored twice as much as the Hopkins unit. Kelly with a quick feed in front, and the ball was knocked down. Brian Jackson gets it back to Beardmore, who's been roaming here in the first quarter, and he lobs it, and a beautiful clearing pass upfield to Poindexter. Fast break opportunity into Thurston. And there's an opportunity to see Dave Petromala. He came over and checked the ball out of 
The stick of Thurston. Thurston was looking for the feed. Petromalo will be everywhere on the defense. Mosco can't pick it up, but it's cradled by Warstel. The All-American, number 22. The Hanley on the far side. They'll slow down a little bit now, Bill. They're getting the substitution, the first line, the total line of Warstel's units coming in. Bullen, number 12, has the ball now. Warstel, of course, and Bryan. Look at the matchup. Steve Mitchell, who's the best long six defenseman, is in on Warstel. Here's Warstel trying to angle in in front of Kessinick. Let me correct that. He's in on Brian Willard. Right. They put Mitchell on Brian Willard. He was down low a moment ago. Now, as you see, with the ball against Mitchell. Willard has the game's only tally. The Terps lead it 1 0. And this is Willard out of Syracuse. He's a tremendous High player. player. He started playing uh, attack for this program, went to midfield. He can play anywhere on that offense. Just one of those guns that Maryland has that can beat you anytime. Here's Warstel, the other midfielder that can score a lot of goals. He's across the pipe. Ball rolls out of bounds. Here in the rain in New Jersey, it seems to have let up a little bit, but the fans still have the umbrellas out, and the field will be a little bit slick for the players. Bill Hopkins can't afford to get behind. Uh, they got the lead early in Maryland when they played earlier this season. They actually held a 4-2 lead in the first half. It was a real close game all the way throughout, and then Maryland went ahead. Maryland can really kill you if they get a good lead on you. They're very tough to score against, period. Hopkins needs to keep it close, hopefully get a lead in the first half. The Jays with the ball now on the attack. Mike Morrill behind the cage. He's a third generation Blue Jay. You're the pipe, His father and grandfather, Rico, Rico. very successful careers at Hopkins. He's number three, feeds in front. Here's Kelly moving in with the left hand. Tried to shovel it back to Morrill and he overthrew him, but Ladoyan will cradle it on the near side. A nice play by Kelly. He saw Morrill over there on the far side. It looked like a sloppy pass, but if that pass connects, he gets Beardmore out of position and they get a good high percentage shot. Here's John Ciccaroni. Brian Jackson marks him behind a wood. Here's an All-American attackman from a year ago with a back to the cage, and he wins it wide. That's a real key matchup, Wood against Jeff McNeil, only a sophomore. Don't forget, a year ago, Brian Wood was considered right there, number 15, the best attackman in the game. Now he's coming off, and this is what Zimmerman's doing. He's putting his second unit in. He puts him in as a blue team. He puts his whole second unit in together. That keeps that first unit fresh. He'll be running the defense of Maryland here, trying to get them a little bit tired. Terps. Ground balls. There they Take are. Maryland's a little bit ahead. Absolutely. And that'll be a key as the game progresses. Maryland used to a grass field. The Terps' homewood field is an artificial surface in Baltimore. Again, this is that second unit, Bill. Jay Clark. Now Greg Kelly. And Zimio used him to spell the attack. He keeps him in as a unit. Gets some fresh legs under his starting attack. This is John Wilkins. Moves in, beat his man, and he scores. The Blue Jays tie it at one. And a goal by John Wilkins. Boy, he ripped the stick right out of the man that was guarding him. Carried it for a bit. And then winged it in. And you think he's very excited? Look at him. He's six foot two, 185 pounder from Stony Brook. Watch his left hand. He comes in, he's beaten on the play. The stick fell down, so he couldn't be defensed. Dropped the stick low and shot high, which is an excellent shot for any great lacrosse player because the goalie has to read the stick dropping low, and then the shot comes over his shoulder. That's exactly what he did on that particular play. This guy, John Wilkins, is a good offensive player. You'll see him on the extra man play and the power play that Hopkins has when they get in the extra man situation. It's one all, eight minutes, 30 seconds left, first quarter action. Terps control the faceoff once again. They've had the early advantage on the faceoffs. And Phil Willard. Top center. Top Phil Willard got it. Phil Willard's actually the number two faceoff man. We mentioned that Todd Ends are the best in the country. Nursing the sore ankle. He hasn't been in yet. If Willard continues success, he won't see, probably. We won't see Enzer possibly in this game. Don't forget, these teams only have a couple days to rest for the, so for the finals if they make it that far. Hanley. Stopped in front. Good save by Kessenick. Well, great save by Kessenick. And, Bill, that's the thing on uh, Quint. You don't shoot high on this guy. If there's a book on this young goalie, you don't shoot high. That shot sails wide. Length Mitchell came right down the field. Mitchell. Excellent play. We talked about the long sticks, Bill, and that's what uh, a long sticks midi can do for you. Steve Mitchell came right down the field. If you don't play him once he gets across the midfield stripe, they go right to the goal and they take the shot. Mitchell, the best long sticks player for Hopkins, had a shot then wide of the cage. Here's Mike Morrill over to Kelly. 1-1 game. We're midway through the first quarter. Ciccaroni couldn't come down with the pass from Dressel. Goes out of bounds, and Maryland will start to clear. 
wasn't a bad pass. It just uh, looks like Chicaroni took his eyes off the ball. Maryland, with that score against him, could have tightened up a little bit. This is a team that has not had the playoff experience, the players on the field, that is, that Hopkins has. Hopkins, the playoff experience for Hopkins is like their last game of the season. They put it in the schedule almost automatically. This team has playoff experience like nobody else in lacrosse. Maryland has to get that experience right here today. Jim Beardmore, the goaltender, his father. Buddy Beardmore coached Maryland to a couple of national titles. In fact, the 11 years that Buddy Beardmore coached Maryland, they made the final four nine times. So Jim Beardmore, good lacrosse family. Here's Willard. Popper. Willard with a little bit of a break, but Mitchell came over and cut him off. He elected to back it off, but uh, nobody's going to gamble too much on the rides and clears here. Neither team wants to give the other team a goal on a clear. They'll give you the clear, make you work a little bit for it, but they're not going to gamble and make a penalty to give you a power play situation. It's under seven minutes left in the quarter, and that shot is taken wide by Riccardi. 1-1 one, one tie here from Rutgers. Bill, number 20, who just came in. Now he drops the ball back for Thurston. Mike Smith, you'll see him a lot today. He plays a little bit of attack. He plays a little bit of midfield. He scored 12 goals in the season. He's an excellent offensive player. But right here, number three, Kirk Thurston, one of the captains for Maryland. He controls the offense every time they can let him handle the ball. You can hear Kessinick yelling to his defenders. As Hanley. In his gloves, in his gloves. Back row. You hear that in his gloves, in his gloves. They want check. They want to stick Back on Hanley's stick. They want to get that check in there. Hanley can not only score, but he can also give a lot of feeds. Top center is Phil Willard, moves in. Now turns around on the roll dodge to try to feed in front, and he overthrew his man. That will roll out of play. Well, here's the all-sides play, Bill, and it's confusing for any player who's trying to maintain on sides when you don't know where the ball's going to go. Now, he has to commit one way or the other. You see him get one break this way, so Thurston goes up, and before he broke over, he had a little bit of indecision. So somebody on the far side went over the field, and that was the offsides play. Here's Brian Wood, number 15. Good move. You can see how strong he is. Feeds in front. Score! <laughs> Brendan Kelly took the beautiful feed from Wood. What a great play by Brendan Kelly, and this is where you can beat a great goalie. You've got to get right in his face. Now watch Kelly to the left of your screen. He'll cut across. He takes the feed from Wood, cutting left to right. He comes in, makes one fake, makes Beardmore commit. Once Beardmore is in the air, he cannot make any adjustment. Watch it again. He comes in tight, gets Beardmore in the air. Beardmore's in the air. He pulls the stick back and goes behind him. That's the only way you can beat a great goalie like Beardmore is to shoot in tight, make him commit, and get the second shot. And Hopkins is doing it to perfection. That's why they're leading the game. That's not what Coach Dick Adell wanted when he called a timeout. He wanted to prevent that late Hopkins goal, but they scored anyway and have their first lead of the game. Here's a chance in front for Bouvier scores, and it is 4-2 Johns Hopkins. Well, we just talked about getting a shot in tight on a great goalie, and Hopkins came right back and did the same thing again. The defense for Maryland is confused. They're dropping people all over. Watch Chanichuk come over to feed it off. Boubier's right in the middle. Watch Boubier take the feed with his back to the goalie, wheels around, and shoots a ground ball that Beardmore might have had a chance to save, but he's getting a little bit rattled right now, and they've scored three straight goals in the span of about two minutes to take a nice 4-2 lead. Hopkins is really doing a textbook for shooting close on Beardmore. They scored two goals within 15 seconds in the final minute of play. And the first quarter comes to an end. There's Coach Zimmerman right now. Zimmerman has a game plan today, and it's obvious that he knows to beat Beardmore, he has to get close to him. They have to get the ball in on the crease and shoot at tight quarters. They've done it, and they've been very successful. Conversely, Maryland's defense is very confused. They've got to work that confusion out, or else it'll be a short day for them. The Terps start our second quarter down two with the ball. 13 Guy Riccardi with the ball. And he'll start the attack. He feeds on the left. The Thurston couldn't control. Willard will chase it down. He's run down. Play goes on. 
Terps come up with the ball. And you can see the condition of the field is having an effect. When you have to cut at all at a sharp angle, everybody's losing their footing. Of course, both teams play on this field, but that definitely will have a factor when you're in, the, in tight quarters trying to get a nice sharp cut. 17 is Phil Willard. Guarded by Mitchell. Val Riccardi, number 13. Beat his man, and the shot hit the pipe to the left of Kessene. I think that shot beat him, and it rang off the left pipe. We had little or no angle. He came with a right hand with no angle. That was a tough shot to make. Quint just had to stand there, and that's all he did. Jay's counterattack. Petramala feeds in front, and the stop was made by Beardmore, who gets up and races out of his own crease. By Wood. This is the goalie, Beardmore. Hanley shot at one. I can't even tell you how many All-American plays we saw in that series. Unbelievable. It started with Hopkins bringing it down. A tremendous play by Petromala to get an excellent shot against Beardmore, who turned away a high percentage shot. Then Beardmore comes out, gets the ball. Look at that for an offensive move by a goalie. Dishes it off to Mike Smith. Now Mike Smith comes in, draws the defense to the right, gives it to his offensive player, Hanley. Hanley made one fake, went to the short side. He took the low percentage as far as space is concerned, but Quint was right there to turn it back. That was a good opportunity for Maryland. If they move the ball that fast all day and can push the tempo, that'll be in their favor. Quint Kesenich, the freshman goaltender, replaced senior Stuart Jones during the season, about midway through. And has played every game since. So the Blue Jays have their goalie for the next four years in Quint Kesenich out of Lindbrook, New York. This is Mike Morrow behind the attacking cage. A 27 goal score on the year. Now Wood on the far side. Starts his run in, head fake. Falls down and his weak shot sails wide. But the ball stays in play again. The heavy field keeps the ball in play and Doug Poindexter points at Brendan Kelly and says, there you go, buddy. What a tremendous play. Take a look at it. The ball's on the side. Poindexter extends himself, gets the stick check just perfectly placed so that there wasn't a foul on it. Knocks the ball out of bounds and a real important possession for Maryland. They take the ball away from that high and explosive offensive Hopkins. Poindexter is one of those defensive players who'll be back, only a junior. And now Beardmore. His father, Buddy, coached 11 years after playing at Maryland. He was an All-American there. All the great teams from the 70s were coached by Buddy Beardmore. They were here five times in the finals. It was usually Maryland Cornell back in the 70s. Tremendous decade for Maryland lacrosse, and it looks like they might be back. Here's Beardmore again. Very instrumental in the Maryland clear each time. Rarely just stays back in his cage. See, Maryland's got that third midfield unit in, Bill, and that's going to be something that they can use to their advantage as well. They've got three midfield units they can run. Hopkins will only use two, and they like to only have that one unit in their shooting. So three units against one and a half, definitely a lot of energy left on the Maryland team. Here's LeMond being stick check. 4-2 Hopkins in our second quarter. This is Chris Connor, number 41. This kid's a freshman. He's got the size of a defensive player. He's tremendous. Hanley feeds in front, and Kesenik made a great save. And here come the James. Stewart wings it wide. Wilkins. A tremendous stick check by McNeil. Lilly made it go well. high, Bill. He came down with that shot. The defense, as you know, will do that. And we'll take a look at the save that really got the thing going. Now, Quint's tough high. We keep talking about it, but look at him. There's a shot that Gilday could have had easily had he gone low. The goalie cannot react that fast. But since his stick starts high and Maryland's shooting high, he's looking like an All-American goalie right now. They've got to start going low in this kid. <laughs> Whistle blows, ball in play, and Bouvier. You can see he may be a half step slow now. He seems to be limping a bit. But this is their first attack. Boubier, Wood, and Lowell. And Ladoya feeds Kelly, number 32. This is the offense that Hopkins is going to have to use. All their horses are out there right now. 
Here's Bouvier, the big boy, and Ladoyne couldn't handle the pass. Kelly will regain. Maryland's still a little bit tight, Bill. They, they had a 4-2 uh, deficit when they played Hopkins at Maryland, but of course, when you're playing at Maryland, it's a little bit different. Today, first time in the semis for these kids, they're a little bit tight. Block with you, Rico! Rico, get Beardmore yells them out as Wood moves in. Rico, Beat his man. Good slide, Wood had his shot blocked. You can talk about the slides of the defenders coming over to pick up the loose man. Well, what I'm going to say about the slides is they're wrong. They're going for the stick. they got to take the body. they got to knock Wood down. When you go for a stick on a guy like Wood, you're not going to get it. You run right by him. He's done that two or three times already. You've got to take away his body. In other words, you miss the stick, you knock him down. Petromala hits 10 and Chuck in stride. Over to Wood. Behind the head to Bouvier. Went behind the net and Beardmore. Gets pushed down by Bouvier, a loose ball push, and the Terps will get the ball. Beardmore was smart on that play. He went back, just straddled the ball to keep it from being taken away by the offense of Hopkins. And as soon as he got contact on his back, he fell down. So he got the push call that he wanted, ball going back to Maryland. Jimmy Beardmore with the ball. And look at the grab ball situation. Maryland's leading 14 to 9. You wouldn't think so because I bet you in time of possession, Hopkins is leading. So even though they're getting the ground balls, they're not keeping possession and getting the timely uh, shots and backups that they need to really keep possession in their end of the field. And the rain continues to come down as Beardmore slowly walks it out. The Blue Jays have a 4-2 advantage here. We've had no scoring in our second period. We played about five minutes. Well, the sloppier the game gets, I think that is going to definitely it will also have an advantage for Hopkins as well because you sort of negate some of the great skills of the whole roster. When you go down to individual great plays, one or two, which might uh, turn a game from a loss to a win. So one or two plays might do it for Hopkins, whereas if you had to play a full game in good conditions, they couldn't match the roster that Maryland has. Brian Willard, straight in. Guarded by Petra Mala. Back center. Here's Bullen, number 12. Of the award off. Chris Bullen came in and used his right hand to ward off. Now he's playing against a short sticks player. Looking at the sideline, Dickie Dell, a little bit concerned. Zimmerman for Hopkins has gotten 100% in my estimation, out of his team. He's put the people that he has to in the right places. He's doing the right things against a great goalie, Jim Beardmore, and right now he has the lead. Wood goes down, and Thorsten mishandled the pass. Wood hits him again. The game getting a bit sloppy now as the rain continues to fall. Ball stays in play. goes out of bounds. Also coming up at intermission, stay tuned. We'll have the highlights from the other semifinal game between Syracuse University and Cornell University. What a great final four. I tell you, the top four seeds are here. Cornell and Syracuse from the north. Maryland and Hopkins, of course, from the south. Two undefeated teams, one in each bracket. A tremendous year for lacrosse, showing the best in the game right here. 5-18 to play in the first half, and the Jays up by two on the attack again. Mike Morrill behind the cage. The junior out of Timonium couldn't handle the ball. And this one will roll out of play, okay, and the Terps you. will have possession back once again. How do you think the momentum is gone now with well, five minutes left? Bill, I just noticed a double team sort of situation. Maryland looks like they're pushing the tempo. They know that to take advantage of their deep depth, they've got to push the tempo of the game. So right here, as this offense started now with five minutes left in the second half, I saw that Dickie Dell pushed a double team situation. He wants Hopkins to run. He wants them to use as much of their legs as he can. And now they might see that continue for the last five minutes of this first half. But tempo overall, Hopkins has had things pretty much their way because they've controlled the offensive situations. Riccardi hauls in the pass from Beardmore. And Hanley throws it in front, and they miss fire on the passing out of bounds. The Jays will get it back. I tell you, Kirk Thurston's been a great player, but he is absolutely killing his team in this quarter. He's thrown the ball away the last three times he's touched it. Count that one, the last four. The last four times he's touched it, he's thrown the ball away. Kirk Thurston is a tremendous player. He's got 13 goals, 30 assists on the season, but right now he's a little bit of a rut. He's got to just calm down and pick his spots better. In Maryland's quarterfinal win, Thurston had two goals and five assists. He's been shut down today. 4.34 to play in the half. 
Well, that last time he threw the ball away, he had a goal. He was five yards in front of Quint that last time. He threw it behind the goal and didn't even hit the man he was aiming at. He's got to get that stick in gear. Here's John Ciccaroni of the Jays. Behind the cage, guarded by Jackson. And now Wood picks it up. You see Ciccaroni's back in the game for Boubier, and that throws off Hot or Maryland a little bit because now you got your best defenseman, Jackson, against their worst attackman, Ciccaroni, because he should be playing Boubier. Here's Kelly with the left cradle. He's on the point, Brian. Now Ciccaroni and Wood. Feeds in front, and Morrill scores. Mike Morrill took the pass from Brian Wood. Just a beautiful centering pass, and he picks up the sixth Hopkins goal. Well, he beats uh, Coglin coming across the crease, and watch it. They'll go behind the goal, but the cut comes from goalie's left to goalie's right. Now watch Wood. He sees it coming back. Morrill just kind of came off the pressure. He felt Coglin leaving him, and he came against that pressure. Watch again. Well, you can't see now. Good feed uh, shot there of Brian Wood hitting Mike Morrow. Morrow's excellent at that. Coglin turned his back to look for the double team, and Morrow backed away from his defender, found the open spot, and Wood found him. Enzer can't control the faceoff. Here comes Steve Mitchell into the goal area. And he'll flip it back out. And chase back across the midfield line. That's our first half time. You won't see any hurry up offense here. Hopkins has things going their way. The tempo is just fine for them, nice and slow, very deliberate. But they're taking advantage of their opportunities where Maryland's had some great opportunities. They've just literally thrown away. This is Bruce Chan and Chuck, one of the co-captains for the Jays. Moves in front. He just shot it wide. Beardmore will chase it down. He's out of his net once again. And the ball is in play. And Beardmore gets pummeled, but gets the ball across midfield to Hanley with three minutes and six seconds to play. Wood up to Ladoyan. Into the goal area. Feeds in front. And the stop was made in front on Stewart. But Jimmy Bearboard just went back into the goal. He's really let his body go this half and got that save just in time. Here's Wood with a shot. He scores. Brian Wood scores. His second of the day. And the Blue Jays have a 7-3 lead. We talked about Brian Wood. He's a first-team All-American who has not had a good season, but here's a guy who scares every coach he plays. Watch Wood. He's got a tremendous cannon with the right hand, but he's going to fake the right hand here and go back to the left. Watch. He goes left, and he cranks that left hand. That's a second left-handed shot today that has gone in the net right past Jimmy Beardmore. Beardmore may be expending too much energy chasing down these balls, and he'd be better off by staying in the goal and just turning away these shots. Let his defense chase the ball. Wood started the season at midfield, as we spoke of earlier. Went back to attack in the first Maryland game. Has a couple goals here today. Here comes Hopkins again. As Gunny wins the face on. And Webster has it on the far side, but the whistle blows. And Don Zimmerman wants a timeout to talk about it. With 2.31 to play in the first half, Don Zimmerman of the Jays stops the clock. I'm sure Dickie Doe would love to have his time out, too. Uh, uh, the Maryland team is a little bit confused. They're not doing things they should do. They're being a little bit hurried in some situations. Again, Beardmore should stay back in the goal, just make the save, let the other players play the ball. Every time he breaks for a ball from the sideline, the ball stops 20 yards short. This is not a fast field, but it's tough to, you know, to treat your instincts differently. His instincts are go get the ball, but he has to realize this field is too slow. He's already got himself banged up, possibly hurt, and less effective because of it. He's got to stay in the goal, let the other players fight for the ball, just make the save. Hopkins on the other side, as we see Maryland huddle up, they're talking about getting the ball and controlling it. Zimmerman has done that the whole first half. His team looks tremendous. What a well-coached team. Our, really? It's really surprising, and it shouldn't be. The Hopkins comes in here and does everything the way they should. They're totally deliberate. They make no bones about it. They put the right people in the right spots. But maybe the thing that Zimmy couldn't count on that has really happened for him is that Brian Wood, the guy that everybody questioned throughout the season because his numbers were down, Zimmerman kept saying, Hey, Brian Wood's fine. He's going to be fine. We expect a big game out of him. And here he is showing a lot in this first half. It's been a tough day for Beardmore. Only four saves. He's let seven balls go by him into that cage. But look so he's, he's been done. beaten up, and he's given up seven goals. So Absolutely. I'm sure they've got he's to had more to... contact than most attackmen on the field, hasn't he, Bill? He's been all over the field, taking, punishing body, body shots. He's chasing balls to the sideline. He's tired probably the most midfielders. He doesn't have to take that much of a burden. 
But you know he's a showman, and you get 19,000 people, and I tell you, sometimes that showmanship instinct just takes over. Quite a, an impressive crowd here today, considering the weather. It's been raining throughout the day. Umbrella sales are up in New Jersey today. Don't forget, Bill, Hopkins called the timeout. They have the ball, so let's see if they set up a play, try to get one shot, one goal with three minutes left. All right, here's Larry Ladoyan feeding it on the far side. And now Wood behind the cage. You can see how well Brian Wood can control the ball. Now Ciccaroni feeds in front of the ball. was fired just behind Ciccaroni. Ladoyan now. Perhaps unfamiliar playing behind the cage. Feeds it out to Kelly. And now Wood at the top of the box. 154 to play in the half. Kelly looks for his shot and gets it back to Wood. They don't have that big booby in there to muscle his way. He's such a strong player. He's still on the bench. And here's Ciccaroni, his replacement. Moves in front and an easy save was made by Beardmore. A minute and a half left in the half. That's what Beardmore does so well. Starting that clear to Coglin. Moves in, has his shot. Takes it. And it went wide. Coglin may have held on to it just a bit too long. Well, he decided about 20 yards out that he was going to shoot, and nobody's going to change his mind. He came in, almost ran past the goal, but still came back to shoot the ball. Again, a little bit of a mental error from Maryland. Hopkins is playing totally relaxed and making the passes when they have to. Maryland mentally a little uptight. That can be changed if they get a couple goals. We've hit the one-minute mark in the first half. Guy Riccardi. Beat two men. Score! Riccardi with a brilliant move. And it's 7-4. A big goal late in that first half. Cuts the deficit to only three. Well, Guy Riccardi's a big guy, and that is a big score. Let's watch a power move if you ever saw one. He loses his footing a little bit, but he regains it. Goes one-on-one -on -one here. Gets good footing. Makes two face dodges to come in real close on Quint. Now, he came in close. Early in the game, they were shooting high from in there. This time, he goes low, right through his legs. What a goal it was. Very timely. Let's watch again as he dodges two guys in. How he'll go low down to the feet. The ball squirts through the legs into the net. That's the fourth goal and a big goal from Guy Riccardi. Sixth of the year. Whistle blows. Here we go again. Turks control it again, and it's Esner. Now that Looks is Todd balls. Enzer, Bill, and that is the first time we've seen him in there. Could be a little bit of emotional lift that Coach Dickie Dell is looking for. He put his best guy in there, even though he's injured, and he gets the face off. Here's Coglin again, who just had that scoring opportunity. Up to Brian Willard, who scored the first goal of the game. 30 seconds left. I think Dickie Dell still has a it. timeout, Bill, uh, if he wants to use one. Here's Willard. Running straight in on Chaninchuk. Feeds in front. And a great save by Kessening. In the crease caught against Warstel. I got to give Kessenick a lot of credit there. Here's a guy who's known to go high. He's known to stay high. Warstel was saying, let's beat him low. Now Brian will come over and he'll give it back to Warstel. Here's a tough midfielder if there ever was one. Warstel faked high twice. It was almost as if Quint knew that those two head fakes were the way that he makes that move. He went right to his knees, anticipating the low shot, and was there to smother it. Petromala lobs it long, and it goes all the way to the cage as time will expire here in our first half. Whistle blows, and we start the second half. 7-4, Hopkins leads. Esner wins this faceoff. He might be the best around at taking those draws. Billy also may be a key to this game because he did not play in the first quarter. He came in late in the first half, and he's been pretty successful. I think he's two for two, and Maryland needs to get the ball to get the shots to come back. They're three goals down. That doesn't really scare this Maryland team. They thought they might be down early. They were at the first meeting of these two teams, but they got to start putting it together. Here's Brian Willard, one of four players from a high school in Syracuse, New York, on this Maryland team. Willard moves in. And he stopped by Kessenick, tried to bounce it low, and Kessenick went down to make the save in the marshy goal crease. And Petra Mala counterattacks for the Jays. Kessenick almost instinctively now knowing that Maryland's going to go low. The last two saves were absolutely critical, one in the first half and one right here where he anticipated a low shot and turned it away. 
Here's Brian Wood, who's having a big day here in the National Semi. We also talked about Brian Jackson. He was taken out of the whole defensive picture in the first half because he was playing John Ciccaroni. He hoped he'd be playing Boubier, but Ciccaroni was in instead. Now, Edel puts Jackson on Wood to try to get Wood out of the game. Jackson is number four to the right of the net. Here's Larry Ladoyan, number 14, a midfielder over to Kelly, one of the other middies. They run a stack offense in front of the cage. One man up high, four along the goal line area, and then one man behind the cage. And the man behind is number three, Mike Morrill. I see that to round out the defensive shift, Coglin is playing Boubier. Morrill wings it wide. He scored six goals in the quarterfinal win over North Carolina. He shot that one wide, but the Jays will hold on to the ball as Boubier was on the line. Again, Danny Coglin picking up the assignment of Boubier. Edel moved his best guy, Jackson, against their best this day, Brian Wood. Here's Brandon Kelly lobbing it to Wood on the left. Wood feeding in front over Byers Dressel, but Kelly gets it down. Wood has taken more shots than anyone on the team, but has not had the shooting percentage that he scored that often this year. He's never had a great scoring percentage. Last year, even though he had a lot of points, he was only a 20% shooter. So he cranks it up a lot, but he can change the complexion of a game overnight. He backhands the ball to Ladoyan, who goes on his knees trying to pick up the ground ball. And Wood will corral it. Up to Boubier. He couldn't control. And it's Dan Coglin. Now Jack Merrill. Now the Maryland attack, and Brendan Hanley, who's been shut down, their leading scorer, beat his man, moves in, and never did get the shot off, and Petra Mala counterattacks for the Blue Jays. Tremendous defense by Hopkins. Uh, Maryland had a good opportunity to get the ball in the net, and there, a ball scooting a little bit, but they caught him down, and uh, Hopkins turned it back. All right, Leaf, our halftime numbers look like this. And, of course, the big thing here that jumps out at you is the shots. Johns Hopkins, 21 shots to Maryland's 12, almost two to one. Even though Maryland leads in ground balls, they're not getting the shots. And that is something I'm sure Dickie Dell addressed at halftime. You can see most of the people have put their umbrellas away. The rain has stopped here, which is good news. It will keep the game from slowing down anymore. Keep the action as fast as it can go on a, on a field that is wet to begin with. The Terps throw that one away. Well, I like what Dickie Dell did. He made the switch that had to be made on defense. He took his best guy, Jackson, again. He put him on Brian Wood. I think that'll pay dividends this half. But the key thing for Maryland is to get the good shots, make the good mental decisions, and get some shots on goal. Hopkins had a 4-2 lead after the first quarter. They extended it to 7-4 at the break. That's where we are now, and the Blue Jays are on the attack. Brian Wood, number 15. Senior out of Baltimore. I guarantee you, Dickie Dell told his defense to stay in a little bit, Bill. He's not having his team come out as much and chase everybody over the field. And I guarantee you, you're not going to see Beardmore running as much as he did in that first half. He's saying, hey, stay in there, make him shoot. We can beat him, but don't give him the opportunities. What has been their most visible player offensively on the day behind a moral? Oh! Mike Morrow had six goals against Carolina. Feeds it across. Now Boubier is stopped right in front by Beardmore. And here he comes out of the net, and he's pummeled to the turf. But he gets the ball upfield. I tell you, he's got a target written on his front shirt. Hopkins would love to take him out of the game. He's that good. Here's Bullock feeding in front. And Pesinic made the save on Willard. And another heavy hit. That one illegal, however. Here comes the flag. All right, here's the play as Ketchnik puts it out to the right. He finds his man, but Maryland nails him from behind. Chanachuk took the ball and was immediately dropped by the Maryland player. But that was an illegal hit because it was dead from behind. And Hopkins will have a man advantage, something that Maryland sure didn't want to happen. <laughs> this is their first man up of the day. And it comes here in this third quarter. The Jays up 
This is a big one, too. Seven to four, Bill. Three goal lead. If it comes to four goal lead, that's getting pretty sizable in the second half of this semifinal championship. It's a one minute penalty. Push from behind. Now Wood to Ladoyan. Back to Wood. Wilkins wings it. And it was blocked in front. And now Beardmore out of that net. He cannot go back into the crease once he comes out, but he clears the ball very nicely upfield to Poindexter. Into the box, that releases the penalty. Hanley sidesteps a man, shoves in front and shoots it wide. Moscow chases down Wood, but the Hopkins attack man starts to clear. Wood, can, or Hopkins can get a break here. Poindexter is absolutely spent. He's real tired. He's way down the other end of the field. Hopkins wastes it. The Poindexter is very tired. And now Thurston comes down to play defense, and he's an attackman. And Morrow runs right by him. Watch if they set up on Kirk Thurston, number three. He saw Poindexter was absolutely gone, energy-wise, and now he's out there playing defense. Hopkins should look to take advantage of that matchup, and they are right now. 14 is Ladoyan guarded by Thurston, who's an attackman, number three, and now Morrow has it on the far side. So watch for Ladoyan, perhaps, to move in front. Here is Morrill. He shot it wide, but Bouvier will be the closest to it as it goes out. And the Jays retain the ball. 8.59 to play in our third quarter, which has been scoreless to this point. Bouvier just sort of waltzes back to get that out of bounds pass. He's got the injury to his leg, so if Danny Coughlin hustles back for those backup shots, he's going to get a few because Bouvier can't afford to re-injure that leg. Here's the big Bouvier. One of your bigger lacrosse players, 6'3", 210, number nine. Hard to move. Tough to stop, too. When he wants to shoot, he usually gets the chance. Here he is. Tries to feed in front. The ball was knocked down nicely by the Maryland Big Stick. But Ladoyan steals. Feeds in front. And Wood scores. Brian Wood is third of the day. And the Jays make it 8-4. Well, Brian Wood was the beneficiary of a great play by Larry Ladoyne. Maryland got the loose ball. Now watch the play by Merrill. He looks up, lazy pass, and Ladoyne goes up, snares with one hand. He's looking for help. He draws the defense, dishes it off to Brian Wood. Brian Wood comes in one-on-one -on -one against Beardmore, makes him commit, and gets that all-important goal. First one of the second half. Eight to four. Third goal of the game and 16 on the season for Brian Wood. And Hopkins now up eight to four. And again, a stupid mistake, Bill. It wasn't that Brian Wood beat him. I think that matchup's going to be pretty good with Jackson on him. But Maryland gave him the opportunity with a sloppy pass. Sloppy passing has been their Achilles heel today. Here's Brian Willard for the Terps. Now Hanley, who has not scored here today, he leads the team with 50 points. But number one, Hanley has not scored. He's got Petramala on him, and that's a good matchup. Donnie Zimmerman put his best on Hanley. At least right now he is. Hanley's done it all from there on this year. Bullen dropped the ball. And Petramala with a head of steam into Maryland real estate. Looks to feed, now lets it fly, and he shot it well wide. Maryland was offside, and with possession, that means they'll spend 30 seconds in the penalty box. Now Hopkins has a man advantage and a chance to widen the lead to five, which would really cause a lot of concern to Maryland. And six on five in front of the goaltender, and the shot by Wilkins sails wide. He's seen a lot of playing time here today as John Wilkins scored the Blue Jays' first goal. Only a sophomore from Stony Brook, New York. Here's John Ciccaroni. Back to Wilkins. Seems to be left-handed. Here's the feed to Bouvier. Amador. A man-up goal from Mike Morrill. And it is 9-4. Johns Hopkins on top. They are taking it right to Beardmore. It'll be an extra man goal and a five goal Johns Hopkins lead. Well, this is the advantage of the extra man. They get it to, be uh, to Bouvier inside. He gets back out to Ladoin. The defense is sliding. They're a little bit disorganized. They didn't really have their feet under them. And again, it was one-on-one -on -one against Beardmore. Let's watch the defense sliding. See Jackson coming back down underneath. Not in time. The defense was sliding out. Cogling moving out to try to stop that shot. 
Beardmore again in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Beardmore has not been five goals down this whole year, I don't think. And this could be a new experience for him that he doesn't quite like. Hopkins doing everything perfectly. Two goals in a minute nine for the Blue Jays. We'll go back to all that energy that Jimmy Beardmore expended early in the game where he was running all over the field. And you wonder, has that hurt the edge that he had as a goaltender? Maybe only 10%, but that could be enough to make him not as great as he is during the season. Here's a chance for Smith. He scores. Mike Smith for the Maryland Terrapins scores his 13th goal of the season and gives Maryland something to cheer about here. It's now 9-5. Mike Smith, a tremendous talent. Look, he gets a little jump on Chanachuk. He protects the stick, comes in tight against old Quint, and when you're that tight against a goalie, you should get the goal, and he did. Quint Kessenick has been absolutely tremendous in the goal for Hopkins, but Mike Smith got the fast break and went right to the cooker on this one to bring his team back to 9-5. We have a loose ball push following the faceoff. That'll give the ball back to Maryland. The Terrapins down 9-5 here. The most goals Maryland allowed all season was 10 in the third game against Townsend State. Bill shots on the game so far. Total, JHU 29, Maryland 15. Two to one in shots. Maryland's got to change that in a hurry if they want to win. Here they come on the attack. Phil Willard throws it to Riccardi. This is their second midfield. Here's Thorsten. And now Brendan Hanley. Has had that big goose egg up there so far. Their leading scorer has not registered a goal or an assist here today. Now the whistle blows. And they're warding off, probably. Yep. That'll give the ball to Hopkins. I think they call it protecting the, protecting the ball there. He had the ball tucked into his chest, and they gave the ball over to Hopkins. But Hopkins has done absolutely everything pretty much perfectly today. Zimmerman has his staff right on top of what they have to do with a team that everybody said was incomplete in too many areas to get to the finals. But I'll tell you what, only a period and a half left and they've got a four goal lead. They very well may everybody wrong, make everybody wrong in that regard. Here comes Kesenik. He was one of those outstanding high school players out of Lindbrook, New York, was a star in high school and in amateur competition was the top goalie coming out of high school. Not too many start as freshmen at Hopkins. That's an offside call. Or was it an inadvertent whistle? Yes. All right, they recounted the players and they'll let Hopkins maintain possession. Yeah, if you think Hopkins is going to walk away with this nine to five, uh, don't count on it. Maryland has come back against this team earlier in the season. And if you look at the score by quarters, you see Hopkins beating Maryland in every quarter by one goal in the last two and two in the first. Nine to five, four goals with this much time is not going to be the end of it for Maryland, but they've got to make their move soon. Here's Brian Wood, who's having a big day. Feeds Ladoyan. And now Boubier behind the cage. Feeds in front, behind the head shot by Marl is stopped by Beardmore. Jackson has an injury. Brian Jackson, the best defenseman on Maryland's team, has an injury. He's down, hurt leg. He'll be coming out as the ball goes up to the offense for Maryland. Poindexter feeds it to Thorsten. He holds the ball back to Riccardi. Maryland still has plenty of time to get a good high percentage shot of controlled offense. They don't have to push the panic button yet. Brian Jackson came out. He's got something in the back of his leg, whether it's a hamstring or a calf. But he's off the field right now, so the number one guy for Maryland on the defense is on the bench. 9-5, Hopkins under five minutes to play in our third quarter. Whistle away from the ball. It was a mouthpiece call. You have to wear your mouthpiece. The referee will give you one warning if you don't use it. They usually hang off the face mask, and right then the referee saw that Phil Willard, who was calling the plays frantically, and of course it's tough to do when you have the round piece in there, you're going like this. He had spit it out. He didn't put it back in. The referee stopped play, said, put it back in. That's his only warning. He'll spend some time in the penalty box if, in fact, he keeps it out again. But well, we remain at even strength now at this point. Willard will try it again. There are two Willards, Phil and Brian. They are brothers. 17 is Phil. Here's Riccardi. 
Jones as he angles in on Chanachuk. And he's on a short stick guy. That's Chanachuk who uses a short stick. That's something they may want to exploit. Here's Thurston. Go, 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 go. Slips. And resets to Willard. Willard beat his man. And Riccardi has it again. Somebody should be open because there was a double team on Riccardi. If he can find the open man, Hopkins is reset. And Smith moves in and he shot it high. Smith had the angle that he wanted on Kessinick, but he winged it high over the net, and that gives Hopkins a chance to bring their big sticks in. Well, that was a nice move by Smith. He came right across the face of the goal, dropped the stick low, went high, and he just missed the six by six. I don't think Quinn had enough time to react to that high shot. Good play because Maryland maintains possession. If you're going to miss the goal, miss it on the perimeter so that your guys can back it up and keep it near end of the field. Hopkins has spent, or Maryland has spent too much time hitting the goalie and giving it back to Hopkins. Thurston and Hanley have been totally boggled up today by this big stick unit for the Jays. They not registered a point. There's Mosco, the other member of that attack. This is the area of play on Hopkins that everybody thought would be questionable. This is a sophomore unit, the close defense. Right there, Steve Mitchell is the veteran on the long sticks. But Hopkins has done a great job in that defense, like you said, Bill, and they have definitely controlling the tempo by using this defense perfectly. 24 is Brian Willard. The Terps with more possession of the ball here, time-wise, in this quarter, but not enough shots. Willard is stripped of the ball. It will have a hold call. You know, I called that. Uh, that may have been Petromala last time. I thought it was uh, Mitchell. I guess it was Petromala playing Willard out top. What happens here is he drops the ball, and then the hold comes, so there's no penalty, just possession. Petromala, what a talent he is. He is the one playing Willard. I probably called Mitchell, Petromala Mitchell a moment ago. They're both very tall, excellent athletes. 43 is Petromala, and he now is matched up against Warstel. So he's going against the great gun. This young sophomore is playing as their number one defender. Here's Warstel angling in. Gilday with his back to the net, over to Handley. They really need Handley to do something. The guy can feed and score almost equally, but he definitely has been a factor in most of the wins this year, and today he's been sort of taken out of the offense. He has. He that leads ball. the team with 50 points. Moscow leads the team with 33 goals, and neither of them have played well today. Terps keep it in the attack half. Here's Gilday moving in. It's in front, man in the crease. Young stepped right into the crease. Pushed in the crease is the call. They'll maintain possession. Nice play by Gilday. Gilday drew the double and dished it off. Now watch, see Gilday drew the double team, got it off to the man behind the goal, came into the crease and was shoved in. Nice picture of the shove going right across the crease, so that why they keep the ball. He didn't go in on his own. Still Maryland ball. I think he stepped on the line before he was pushed, but in any event, the Terps hold the ball. You're probably right. <laughs> they don't step. have that replay down there. You're right. Mike's. Mike Smith has a couple of goals. And now back to Willard. It's inconceivable that Maryland's starting attack of Hanley, Thurston, and Moscow have not scored, but they're still in the game. And the Blue Jays have the ball. And the goaltender Kessinick starts to clear. Well, Petromala really gets my vote as the best defensive player out here today. He definitely is setting the tempo for a Maryland defense that is very young, but looking very polished today against everybody's best offense this year, Maryland. They have been absolutely incredible and good at scoring. Hopkins is turning him back today. Here come the Jays on the attack. They may have weathered a bit of a, hot, of a uh, Maryland storm there. Terps put a lot of pressure on. Could not score. Now Hopkins has the ball once again with a minute 20. Now to play. Third quarter. Bouvier feeds in front and Kelly's shot sails wide. Well, I know Dickie Dell would love to get one more goal. This four-goal lead is comfortable for Hopkins. If he can cut that down to three, then you've got to really start thinking about it a little bit more. Edell needs to draw that team closer. Here's Brian Wood beating his man. And he's stopped by Beardmore, who went up high to stop Brian Wood and rob him of a would-be fourth goal. Here come the Turks. Thurston feeds in front. Hanley, Moscow, they score! 
tremendous play from Maryland. I can't even tell you how many passes. It had to be six passes coming down the field. You're really gambling that you might make a bad pass. Each one of these guys had a tremendous opportunity for a shot. Let's try to follow the action. It comes right down the field, goes to the right. Now, there's an easy shot. He goes off to Hanley, who has an easy shot. He goes over to Moscow, who has an even better shot, and the ball goes in. Take a look again. Ralph, Bill Ralph comes down. The young freshman defender gives it to Riccardi. Now, Riccardi goes over to Thurston, who dishes it into a perfect spot. That's Hanley. Hanley pulls the goalie to him, gives it back to Moscow. Moscow had an open 36 square feet, and what an important goal that is. Nine to six, and I know Dickie Dell is happy. And Beardmore started it all by making a fabulous save on Wood. Didn't that look like the Beardmore that everybody has seen this season? Since he hasn't run all over the field, he has been a little bit better in tight. He used a lot of energy early on and gave up some goals that maybe he wouldn't have if he would have stayed in the goal area. Beardmore coming into his own. This looks like it's going to be a good one down to the wire. 9-6. 45 seconds to play in the quarter. Ooh, bad matchup for Hopkins here. We're still against Chanachuk. Short stick. Thurston will chase it down. That attack finally got it going. Hanley feeding Moscow for the goal after they were shut out for nearly three quarters. Orstel's Orstel. drooling. You see this, Bill? He's got a short stick player on him, and he's shooting shots that he should wait on a little bit. Now Hanley with 20 seconds. Try to get it to Willard. It'll roll back towards midfield. they got to hurry to get a shot off. This will be a wasted opportunity. Willard doesn't know the time. Here's Willard, moves in, lets it fly, and he scores! What a Brian great play. Willard! Bill, Brian Willard had that ball up top, very high. He did not know there was only 15 seconds left. You can visually see him get caught by his players. Then all of a sudden he says, hey, I gotta go to the races. He raced hard down for a right-hand shot, went to the left pipe, and Brian Willard brings his team back to within two. Here come the Turks. Now look at the shot again. That was late on it, but he had the right-hand shot, very tough angle to come all the way across to the far pipe. He hit it, and just like that, Maryland's back scoring twice within one minute. Nine to seven, and Edel is breathing a little easier. Hopkins allowing two goals in quick succession. Just when you thought Hopkins was taking control, here comes Maryland for three goals. And that's the end of the quarter. Don't forget, during the season, it was very close throughout three quarters. It was 7-7 at the end of three, I believe. And Maryland just had too much, too many people for the fourth quarter in Hopkins. Maryland won that game 11-7 at College Park. It was the Terps' first win over the Jays in 10 years in 15 games. Here's Brian Willard. And Bill Todd Enzer again continues to face off and face off successfully. He has come in late in the first half. Dickie Dell going over to congratulate him. He's done a tremendous job in getting the ball to Maryland. And that's what, of course, you need when you're behind. You've got to have possession to get the good shot. Gil Day is number five. Working, working on a midi. His pass for Hanley rolls out of bounds, and the Jays will get it back. Tough opportunity there. Gilday had a short stick defender against him, Damon Stewart. And Gilday elected to drive in close, dish it off to Hanley, but a, the poor passing again, which has plagued Maryland, called him. Eight straight faceoffs for Maryland, we're told, and that should take its toll against Hopkins. If they can continue to get possession, Maryland should be in pretty good shape for the fourth quarter. But so far, really, all in all, Hopkins has totally dictated what's going to happen in this game. Maryland's up against it for the win. Here's Kessenick starting the clear. Well, the first half was a horrendous one for Beardmore. Only four saves. He led in seven goals. What's been the difference here in this second half? Well, we talked in the first half about him expending too much energy outside the goal. He was. He was getting beaten up. He was running too much. He was taking away maybe 20% of his energy outside the goal. This half, I'm sure Edel said, stick in the crease, stay there, and just stop the shots. We'll win the game if we're going to win it. And it's worked for him. Here's Dan Coglin. Up to Riccardi. Number 13. He'll slow it up as the Terps bring their other midfielders on including Phil Willard, number 17. Mike Smith, Mike Mosco, and Thurston are up there along with Hanley. So they're going with four attack men here in this fourth quarter. Another sloppy pass. Out of Unbelievable sloppy pass. 
Maryland has to get the better passing. If they're going to get the shots, they're going to kill themselves if they continue to do that. 13 minutes left. They went with four attack men on that sequence. What would be the reason? Well, actually, Mike Smith that? goes both ways as far as attacking midfield. Edell likes to use him. He's the fourth attack player, but he's so good that Edell likes to keep him on the field. So he'll mix him into the midfield units, and then he'll also use him to spell some of his attack players. Mike Smith is so good that he just wants to get him on the field wherever he can. Hopkins cleared the ball across midfield. The whistle blew. It appeared to be offsides, but they counted up, and another inadvertent whistle. It's twice that that's happened. It's twice in that same referee on the far side. It's a tough call to make the offsides. There's so many players running around. It takes a good eye and a quick decision. Larry Ledoyan, who was second on the team, number 14, picks it up on the left side. He's out of Timonium, Maryland, a senior. Ledoyan had the finest season of his college career. He really hasn't produced like he should have or at least the predictions were coming out of high school. He was Mr. Everything in high school and finally is uh, showing what all that potential was good for. Two men behind the cage. Number three, Mike Morrow, and number 32, Brendan Kelly. Now here's Kelly working on that midfielder. Bad matchup, short stick against Kelly, and he scores. Brendan Kelly makes it 10-7. Beardmore, watch that one go right over him again. Hopkins has a 10-7 lead. Well, the problem is they had a short stick mid midfielder on him. Number five is Gilday. C5, he's got a short stick. He can't stay with Kelly. Kelly recognized that. You see how Hopkins is all over to the left? They isolated Kelly against the short stick Gilday. He's not a defensive player. That's not his uh, forte. Brandon Kelly, an excellent offensive player on that midfield. 15 goals, nine assists. This is a guy that likes to shoot. He had a short sticks player against him. The whole team cleared out for him. He got a good shot and made it count. The 10 goals is the most allowed by Maryland all year. They also allowed 10 against Towson State. That's been equaled here by Hopkins, and we have 12 minutes to play. In Towson State, it was late in the game. They had 16 goals. They were winning. There's no question. This is the first time in a competitive situation that a team has really maintained and gotten a lead on Maryland that has challenged their ability to win the game. We'll have to see if this team has the ability to come from behind when it really counts. Dressel feeds Boubier on that far side. Drawing him, Dan Coglin. Here's the big player, Boubier, trying to muscle it in. And the backhander comes to Wood. He's guarded by the great defender, number four, Brian Jackson. 11.30 to play in regulation time. 10-7, Hopkins on top. Kelly and Boubier have a catch on the far side, and Coglin will pick him up once again. Is that a good matchup for them? Which, which one we're talking Coughlin about now? and Bouvier. Coughlin Bouvier is going to be all right. Bouvier has got that leg injury. He's not going to the goal as much. Here's Wood with a shot, and it just goes wide of Beardmore. He may have gotten a piece. And Coughlin corrals the rebound. Side arms the ball to Willard. Could be a fast break. Willard can go right down the pike. Brian Willard will slow it up, however. Under 11 minutes to play. 10-7 Hopkins is... Big goal there by Brandon Kelly. Gave him that three goal cushion. Three goals. Tough to dent in fast fashion. We've seen two goals scored within a minute in this game about twice, once by each team. Here's Bullen, number 12. Back left. Petromala totally dominating the matchup of Petromala against Hanley, and that has really hurt Maryland as much as anything so far. That attack from Maryland is only contributed one goal to the Terrapin cause here today. Here's Phil Willard with a shot. And it went well wide. It will stay in play. Now Kessenick is out of his net. I think that might cost a minute for Brandon Hanley. 30 second push. Well, Kessenick, like Beardmore, roams out of his net. And when you're out of the net, you're fair game. Well, you know, a little discretion here would have been Hanley's call. Hanley was so intent on getting the ball, he just ran right over him. And I know that, I'd say the call was real tough because Quint was facing the player to the last minute, and then he turned. And I don't know if I would agree with that call when you see the replay, the benefit of the replay. In other words, Quint faced the man. The only reason he turned was to save himself from pain, and you really can't penalize a player for that. But these refs did. Really finds themselves down again, third time this half. The Jays have scored two extra man goals here today. This is a big one right here, Bill. If they can get this one, they're going to be in pretty good shape. Ladoyan winds it up and missed the net to the far side. He picked the lower corner on Beardmore, but whistled it wide. 
Wood, top of the box. Wilkins and now Ciccaroni. Here's Wood with a shot. He scores. Brian Wood is having a marvelous game. His fourth goal. This another man up goal. The third extra man goal for the Blue Jays on the day. And they have an 11 7 lead. Brian Wood is known. We've talked about a shot and liking uh, the speed of it to a cannon shot. Look at it here. That's exactly what it is. He's got one of the hardest shots in lacrosse. Everybody knows that. This year's been a tough year for him, but today the cream's rising to the top. Brian Wood just cannon shot against Jimmy Beardmore, who's had a real tough day in the goal in that most of the shots taken by Hopkins have been high percentage, good shots, and very tough, making him work a lot in the goal. Hopkins is doing it all. This is the most goals Maryland has allowed since losing to North Carolina in last year's quarterfinals. They allowed 12. And Johns Hopkins, who didn't have an extra man play in the first half, though, is two for three in extra man situations this half. There's a chance in front, and the stop easily made by Kessinich. And Petramala corrals in the clearing offense. Good move by the big stick. He's stopped by Beardmore. And he's down, too. If Maryland can get the ball and get it up quick, Petramala will be stuck down this end of the field. He's moving back now. He'll be all right. Mike Smith lobs it up to Kirk Thurston. There's number three in the whites of Maryland. Now here's Handley one-on-one -on -one against the midfielder, Shannon Chuck. Feeds in front, and the ball went behind Thurston. But it's corralled by Riccardi. Back to Handley, and he shot it wide. Boy, Hanley is really snake bitten. He's getting a couple good shots now, but he can't find the mark. Credit the Hopkins defense. They're doing what they have to do. Mitchell lobbed it back across midfield, but Brian Jackson throws it back up for the attacking Terrapins. Willard now to Mike Smith. Watch Hanley. In, winds it up, and he shot it wide. Gosh, Bill, Hanley was standing right there on the left pipe. Didn't get the feed. You know, they started this period 9-7. to seven. Maryland could be in pretty good shape. They knew that it would be tough going to the fourth quarter. They thought they had the legs and the depth to make it count in the fourth quarter. Hopkins is just not going to let it happen. They have had a perfect game as far as coaching is concerned. They're getting the maximum out of their talent. And right now, this four-goal lead looks pretty good. But there's still 7.45 to play. The Maryland attack has been shut down through most of the game. They've scored only once. As a unit, that is. Let's see what the big sticks can do in attempting to clear. They'll start with goaltender Beardmore. Lobs it to Hubbard. Now here is Kirk Thurston. I think that's the biggest surprise of the day, the way the defense has throttled the attack of Maryland. And I give him a lot of credit, but I don't give him all the credit And that Thurston has really not played a good game. He's dropped the ball. He's been too tight. He hasn't played as well as he has during the season. Here's Worstel, who's been shut down offensively as well. Somebody has to rise up right now if Maryland wants to win this game and take charge in the offensive end of the field. Brian Willard, number 24. Six minutes, 50 seconds to play. You know, another guy we haven't heard from, Bill, is Moscow, number eight. Now, he had four goals in the first meeting of these two teams, and he's being shut down by DiTomaso. Only one goal today for Mike Moscow out of Bel Air, Maryland. Here's Thurston. Good defensive play by Damon Thurston. Stewart to steal the ball. Again, he drops the ball. Thurston is just not, it's one of those days. He's not having a day, and that's really costing Maryland. 622 to play. Coglin steals the ball. Well, it's and getting down that, to crunch time, Bill. Yeah, the six is. minutes left. They've got four goals they need. They got to start getting shots and get them in a hurry. Delayed penalty. They get and get a shot here. You Opportunity for Maryland. You see the flag. That means there's a delayed penalty coming up, but Moscow scores, and it is 11 8. <laughs> Just when we mentioned Mike Moscow, that penalty be, will, will not be in effect anymore because it's only a technical penalty. So that penalty is wiped out, but it's okay for our Maryland because look at Moscow. They get a goal out of it. Moscow takes the backhanded feed, turns, goes up high, and bounces far enough in front of Quint that he really couldn't get a stick on the ball. It went by him and just caught the inside of the pipe. Nice shot by Moscow. We just talked about him not being in a factor. Here he goes, scoring a very important goal for Maryland. He was a transfer from Penn State. And isn't Dick Adele happy that he did leave the Nittany Lions to play at Maryland? He had four goals in the first meeting and picks up his second goal here. I tell you, that was, that was absolutely 
Well, that was critical because time was really, with six minutes left, four goals, you had to score. It was that important that you had to score then. It was as if it was 30 seconds left in the game, as far as they were concerned. They got it when they needed it. Let's see if they can continue. They get another face-off as well. Making all the switches, getting the offense in. Bill Willard couldn't get the shot off. It comes down to Mike Smith. 535. The Terrapins keep looking up at that clock and see it ticking away. Smith moves in and shot it wide, but you see the flags. That's the slow whistle, which is a delayed penalty, and the Terps will have the extra man. Mike continues to go high on these shots. Boy, what an opportunity he passed up here. He beats three guys. He beat those two in the slide, and then he goes across and beats Petromala, holds the ball, and goes high again, just missing the pipe. Maybe it wasn't such a bad shot. He just missed the goal. Tremendous play by Mike Smith. You know he's mad, and that's exactly what he's saying. I missed the goal. He had the right selection, just missed the pipe. Extra man situation for Maryland. Everything's critical here. Right, Phil, they've got no time left. They've got to do it now. A one-minute slash on Damon Stewart of Hopkins gives the Terrapins a man up. They're down by three with five minutes, ten seconds to play. Here's Bosco. And Kessinich, the goalie, will race back to his cage. It's open right now. Hanley behind the net. Feeds in front. And now Thurston. Over to Bullen. Here's the shot, and it's wide. Good shot. He was wide on the perimeter of the goal, which means possession will stay with Hopkins. That's a good selection by Brian. Big series here for Maryland. They need one badly. Here's Brian Willard again. And of course, it's just as big for Hopkins because if they sure. want to win, they got to turn this one away. They've done a great job defensively. Brian Willard once again over to Thurston. Couldn't handle the pass. Mosco saves it by picking it up but loses it. And the Blue Jays and James DiTomaso have it. I tell you, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest thing in the game that has turned the tide is that there seems to be a hole in Thurston's stick. He cannot handle the ball today. Petromala into that goal area. Feeding to Ladoyan. You know, as good as Thurston is, I'd sit him down. I mean, I, if you, you've got four or five guys you can put back there. He's a great player. He's had a great year, but he's not doing it today. I'd sit him down and put somebody else in there. And I think they're doing it right now. They've got Young going in for Thurston. That's what's happening. But Thurston it may be too late with only four minutes to play. The Terps see themselves down by three, and the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays are in no hurry to get rid of the ball here. And in that respect, watch the double team opportunity. Beardmore, they'll call red. Watch Beardmore. He'll go back, he'll double the ball, and they'll try to get it. They got to get the ball here or they're in trouble. Because if he makes two passes, then they have an excellent shot with no goalie. What a check. Well, that was point actually that knocked the stick right out of the hands of Chanichuk. And here come the Terps on the fast break. Willard. Feeds in front, and Pesanek went down to make a fine save on Young. Here's Young again. Feeds the Hanley, and Pesanek closed the door on him as well. Less than 50 percent for a 75 percent save goalie. So right there is the story in a nutshell. Consequently, Hopkins has 11 goals more than any other team has scored against this fine Maryland defense. Here's Brian Wood with an open net, and he scores. They double teamed him. Brian Wood came out of the corner and in his fifth goal of the day. Well, that was an exclamation mark that was prophetic in our open. We talked about Brian Wood. Which guy is going to show up? Brian Wood knew there was going to be a double team. Watch this. He'll drive in when he gets a step. He knows that Beardmore is going to come toward him. He goes all the way in to Beardmore. He comes with a little face dodge, gets around Beardmore, and puts it in the open net. What Beardmore has to do here is if you come out of the goal and you don't get the stick on Wood, you better get his body. He didn't get the body. Wood had an easy shot, just danced over the crease, put in the game winner, or the one that really ices it. 12 to 8, Hopkins on top. Not enough time for Maryland, I'm afraid. With five goals in the game, he's only two away from the record, which is seven. That was said back in 1971 by Tom Cafaro of Army. Well, Zimmerman told me uh, yesterday, he said, look, we had questioned him about Brian Wood. He said, look, Brian Wood's doing fine, and we expect a big game out of him tomorrow. <laughs> I guess he got it. Brian Wood definitely would be our MVP if we have one to pick. He has five goals and has totally dominated the tempo of the game and has really risen to the top when he needed to to put his team 
into the finals. Great day for Hopkins, a team that six weeks ago, Bill, nobody would have predicted this ending for this team. Here's the feed in front picked off. The Terps find themselves down here 12-8. Here come the Jays again. This is Lilly beating it across. They've got the fast break going. They'll slow it up. A minute 27 to play. Now well, you got to take their hats off to the coaching crew and Hopkins. There's a shot by Wood, and it was deflected. What I said about Tom Caffaro of Army, the seven goals in a game, he shares that with others, including Ed Mullen of Maryland and Mike French, the great Mike French of Cornell, and Franz Wittelsberger of Johns Hopkins. That was back in 74. So four players have scored seven in a game. Brian Wood with five today. Wood there against Jackson. That should have been the matchup, but Edel chose to put Jackson on another player, and Wood took advantage of it. Dominating the game, MVP for Hopkins, and Hopkins going on to the finals. Beardmore gets pushed down one more time, just for good measure for the Blue Jays. It's been a rough day. It'll be a loose ball push, and the Terps will have the ball. Exactly 60 seconds remain, and Beardmore season. And the career for this great goaltender for Maryland. See you Ground balls right here is a story for you. Maryland winning handily the ground balls, and we all thought that would be a key. Even the coaches did, but it didn't quite matter because, because every time Maryland got an opportunity, they sort of squandered that opportunity, and Hopkins had a very high percentage of efficiency when they had the opportunity. The Maryland Terrapins go off sides on that fast break. That'll give the ball back to Johns Hopkins, and they can probably hold on to it, leading 12-8 with only 50 seconds remaining. We talk about the experience factor up top a little bit, and uh, that very well could have been a big part of it as well. A little bit, somebody down here at the Hopkins bench. It's real humid out here, even though it's been raining, and when you go full out with a thin squad like Hopkins has, you might find yourself a little bit spent at the end of it, but Hopkins put it all on the line here today, and they are going to get rewarded because they'll be on to the finals. It will be a return. They went nine straight years to the finals. Last year, Carolina knocked them off in the semis, but they're back in that title game. And they may not be done yet. Here's John Ciccarotti in front. They score. Mike Morrill scores the 13th goal for the Blue Jays. Doesn't really matter, but Timmy Beermore had to go out. And it was almost like, why not? He went about 30 yards out of the goal to try to intercept the pass or knock it away. It was sort of academic anyway. Hopkins recognized it beautifully, as they have all day long. Dickie Dell, not the ending he had envisioned when all this talent came together and started on that undefeated streak this year. Donnie Zimmerman, a lot of problems this year. A team that didn't have any character, didn't have anything really coming together, was up and down, up and down, up and down. And of course, Bill, in any sport, the key is be up at the right time. Finish strong, and that's what Hopkins is doing. Here they come once again. Ciccaroni gets the assist. Brian Wood runs with the ball with 20 seconds left. Wood behind the net. We're down to 10 seconds. He still holds that ball. No one's going to get it from Wood with five seconds left. Morrow's late shot after the horn. The Johns Hopkins Blue Jays are back in the NCAA championship game. They knock off number one and undefeated Maryland here, 13 to 8. Brian Wood is the hero today with five goals for the men in blue, the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays.